All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home, our online Bible study that we have here on Thursday nights uh, here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. I'm your host, Pastor Mike May. What's up, y'all? How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, we want everybody to come on in. We're giving you an opportunity to go ahead and share with others, set your watch parties, do those things. Um, let people know that we're on tonight. I want to deal with something tonight to help you even where your mental stability, your mental health is concerned. So anybody that you know that may be dealing with that issue, let them know. We're going to talk about some things tonight. I want to deal with some things of how to control your thought life um, uh, with the word of God. So I just want to deal with some of that tonight. And uh, so go ahead. Let them know. Let them know now. Let them know right now, because I'm expecting the Holy Spirit to speak some things. And so we're expecting not only for the written word to be spoken, but also the rhema word of God to be spoken. That there'll be a word expressly spoken to you about your situation that God will minister to your heart. So I need you to come in with, the, excuse me, with your expectations on high. And I want you to go ahead and get ready to receive tonight. All right. So go ahead, grab your Bibles, get your stuff together, get your pads, get your pens, get your, listen, take notes, folks. <clears throat> because when God's wisdom begins to flow, I want you to be able to capture it. And to not just hear the words that are coming out of my mouth and hearing what I'm saying, but what is God saying to you while I'm speaking? So those are the things that I want you to be mindful of for all of our first timers that are coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome here to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Um, I believe that there will be something that will be ministered that will be a blessing to your life. So once again, on behalf of my wife, Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to you guys. We love and appreciate all of you for, for coming out tonight. Hey, you got many other platforms that you could be watching right now, but we don't take it for granted that you showed up here tonight. And so we just want to thank everybody for tuning in. There'll be some that'll be coming in as I'm ministering. Uh, but for those that are here now, welcome, 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 welcome. All right, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. We're going to jump into this tonight. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely tonight, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the Word of God. We do approach the holy written Word of God reverently, and we just thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. We pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open and ready to receive the engrafted Word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, we do covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration to minister to the lives of people uh, that are connecting with us tonight. And so we thank you whether it's through this live stream and broadcast or someone through a replay that they're pulling in it back up at two, three and four o'clock in the morning that you are ministering to them wherever they are, whatever country they're in right now, that this word will penetrate their hearts, will help renew their minds and transform their lives. And so we just give you the praise, the glory and the honor for it now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Okay. 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 We are going to be dealing with the soul of a man, the soul, your mind, your mental health, your mental um, strength and development. And, and one of the key ways um, that we do this is through meditation of the word of God to control our thought patterns, to help reprogram the way that we think. I, I begin to realize something as you know, a lot of people are talking about mental health, mental stability, mental well-being, and and, I, and I'm constantly saying, man, the answers are in the word of God. God's word has the answer for us to be strong. There's a scripture that says when a, when a person day, uh, faints in a day of adversity, it's because their strength is small. And so when you're, begin, when you're weak, whether it's mentally, whether it's spiritually, it's easy to faint, give up, cave in, and quit when you have constant pressure coming at you. And so in this day and time uh, where we're dealing with the pandemic and people are staying in a little more and then people are getting tired of being cramped up and people are feeling lonely. People are feeling depressed. What, what it's also call, causing is for some, you know, in any situation, whether it's a pandemic, in any stressful situation, in any situation that seems destructive in any way, shape, fashion or form, people can take one of two options. They can either thrive or they could crumble and cave in. 
And so what we want to do is we want to equip you to develop your strength in the Lord and understand who you are in Christ, understand the strength and the ability that you have and now how to release that ability. And so one of the things is I talk to a lot of people and I minister to people and I've counseled people for years and years. And one of the things that I've come to realize is that God has been dealing with me about getting people back to basics, getting them back to the foundational things um, in order to build their lives effectively. And there's a scripture in Matthew that talks about um, a guy who receives God's um, word and does them is like a person who builds their life and their house upon a rock. And the person who doesn't do what God says is like the person who builds their house upon the sand. And so when the waves and the, and the storms and the things come against it, depending on the foundation will determine if the house stands or if the house falls. So what are you building your life off of? What are you uh, developing yourself in? And then sometimes I've come to realize that when people get born again, one of the first things they need to understand is how to take God's word, how to now go into it, dig it into it, apply it and begin to walk it out. So success ultimately is fulfilling number one, God's will for your life. And so now the most important things or one of the most important things that you need to find out after you get born again is, okay, okay, what, what, how does God want me to function? How does he want me to live? How does he want me to do these things? And when we talk about this being a year of kingdom renaissance or God's will being implemented in the earth, God wants us to understand how he does what he does and how he wants us to do what we are to do. And so now every Christian, every believer needs to learn how to walk by faith, in order to accomplish God's will and plan for your life. And so now you must learn how to seek him. You must learn how to take his word and meditate on it. You must learn how to take his word, meditate on it and apply it to your life and begin to see the results. And so, so many people are dealing with mental anguish and these thoughts that are coming against you time and time again, and thoughts over a period of time that have attacked you and that you've yielded to becomes what the Bible calls strongholds. It's a house of thoughts that is so fortified in your thinking that it's hard for you to break away from it. And so we want to kind of deal with some of those things tonight. How do I break out of the, the way I've been thinking about things? And so now as a man think of the Bible says in his heart, so is he. In the book of uh, Proverbs, I think it's 23 and 7. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Or we can say it like this, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So how you think about yourself is what you ultimately end up becoming. So even though it may be opposed to how God says or what God says about you, how you think, how you think is extremely important. Why do I say that? Because now when you get born again, your spirit is changed because your spirit becomes alive under God because God gives you a new nature. He puts his spirit within you. But now the apostle Paul says we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, by its new ideals, by its new pattern of thinking, its new attitude. So we need to have a new attitude in Christ. We need to have a new outlook, but it's hard to have a new outlook if you have no new information. And so now we want to show how do we go in and begin to deal with this thing. So now, okay, now that I've set that up, I've said that and shared that, let's dig into this right now. I want to go to the book of Psalms chapter one. Um, the book of Psalm, the first division of Psalm, verses one through three, verses one through three. So I want you to go ahead and turn there with me. And it says this, it says blessed. Now let's stop there. Blessed or empowered to prosper or have success is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So now he says, in order for you to be blessed or empowered by God, God says for this blessing to come upon your life and to operate and to function in your life, you cannot now receive counsel from the ungodly because their counsel will go against my counsel and my wisdom. He says, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So we're talking about the law of the Lord. We're going to talk, we're talking about the word of God right now. We're talking about God's principles, his laws. Laws are established principles that will work for anybody that gets involved with them. And he says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Okay. So now he says in this law, in his word, does he meditate 
day and night. In other words, continuously, that you're constantly thinking about God, you're constantly thinking about his word. You know, what do you give your attention to? Whatever we give our attention to is what we grow in and what we come, become more established in. So whether it's through television shows, music, movies, books, it can be, you know, spending time reading books that feed fleshly desires, lust, or fear in our lives. It could be media. It can be the news, things that are feeding us information on a continuous basis. Whatever dominant information is coming in is what normally you're established in, is what normally your mind is consumed with. So even during this time, like of the pandemic, you know, um, there was at one point sometime last year where I just turned off. I just stopped looking at the news because every time you were talk, you turned to it, it was talking about the virus and talking about people dying and talking about this and talking about that. And all they could do is begin to feed the fear. It, it will begin to feed fear into your heart and into your mind. And so, listen, we're people of faith. And so we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So on the other hand, fear cometh by hearing and hearing the words of the devil. And so now we understand he's the God, little G of this world system. And yet he loves to control the media, the airways. And and if he can pump fear into the people, he can cause death and destruction because now people will begin to have no hope. And the very moment you mention something, the fear of it rises up in you. So he says here, he says now, In his law, do you meditate day and night? Verse two. Now in verse three, it says like this. And he, that person that meditates on the word day and night, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, okay. So now we understand that we have to spend time in the word so that we can become like a tree planted I love it by the rivers of water. So a tree planted by the rivers of water, the roots of that tree will feed off of the water that flows from that river that comes through the ground and that provides nutrients to the ground that springs up through the roots that causes the tree to grow, that causes the tree to become strong. And I like it like this. It says his leaf shall not wither. Now you've seen leaves on the tree wither. It's because it's not getting the proper nutrients, whether it's the proper sun or water or whatever. And so whenever you see a withered tree or withered leaves, it's because it's not receiving what it needs to grow. And so now God is saying this, if you stay planted and rooted in the word of God, you will begin to grow. You'll begin to increase. You'll begin to flourish. And so now we got to stay with the word so that we can flourish, so that we can grow and so that we can increase in him. So it's extremely important. It's extremely important, folks, that we feed off the word, whether it's through videos like this or, you know, that, listen, the, the Internet, it is flooded with information, flooded with ministry right now. And so you have to be mindful what you're receiving or what you're eating, because what you're eating will determine who you become. So now this is important. And I like this. So now we see, too, in the book of John, third John, two, it says, beloved, I wish to pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So the degree to which your soul prospers will determine your life prospering. So these are basic principles, but these are important principles. So now how you think will determine what you believe or the information that you get in will determine what you believe. What you believe will determine how you live. How you live will determine how you what manifests in your life. Okay? So we've got to understand is that information or words will determine your thinking. Okay. Your thinking now governs your emotions, emotions or feelings caused by pain or pleasure that leads you into a direction, whether good or bad. And so now your emotions now affect your decision-making processes. Now, so many, so many people are making decisions based off of their current emotion, which is now rooted from the way of thinking that's been coming from information or their environment that surrounds them. And so now we got to understand if we are not making the right choices or decisions, we need to now begin to see what environment is framing how we think, framing how we feel, and then ultimately framing what we decide. And so now your decisions will govern your actions because you act out, you decide a thing before you act out on it, whether it's well thought out, 
or whether it's instantaneous in the moment. And when you train yourself to think right, even instantaneous decisions will begin to line up with God's word because you meditate on the word to such a degree that the first thing that comes up and pops up in you when a situ situation arises is what does God say about it? And so the minute you think, what does God say about it? Now that helps you to make the decision. If he says, speak, speak life versus death, then I'm not going to allow the following action will be. I'm not going to allow my tongue to say something opposite to what God just said about me. So now we got to say, okay, so now if everybody, you know, we hearing things and we, 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 we understand that we don't take it lightly. Now, no, let me just say it like this. Cause God is telling me, I got to deal with some things, man. Even from this standpoint of going to teach his people who they are. Sometimes we hear stuff. We think sickness and disease is so much stronger than the power of God and God's word. And it is not so sickness is no match for God. Disease is no match for God. There is no sickness in heaven. There is no disease in heaven. The only reason it's here in the earth is because of sin. The fallen state of man is Satan came and became the God, the overseer, the ruler of this earth. But when Jesus came, he gave us authority over that joker. And so now you got to understand that even though the world is participating in something, we as the body of Christ don't have to participate in it if we don't want to. I know that strong. I know some of your loved ones who are Christians, who are spirit filled have gotten sick. I know some of the people that you know, some may have died from it. And I'm so sorry about that, but that does not change who God is and whose word, what his word is. That's a strong word. I know it's a strong statement, but I got to get you to the point where you stop believing the world's thing and believe God, man. I'm telling you, God's word reigns supreme. If we can become strong enough in it, I believe it. The Bible says, let God be true in every man alive. And if I see something in the word and I know my thinking is opposite to it, I have to adjust my thinking to fit him. I don't change God to fit me. I got to change to fit him. Because listen, I realize, hey, let God be true. And Mike, I'm the liar in this situation. So if I say one thing and God say another, I got to line myself up with God's word. And the way that I do that is by taking his word, meditating on it, spending time with it, listening to it, speaking it, rolling it over, studying it out to make sure that those things be so and say, OK, I'm going to take on the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. I have the tongue of the learned and I speak a word in season. Then it says to them that are weary. So listen, I'm speaking a word in season right now because there are many weary people that have been out there through attacks of the wicked one. And we are going to come together right now in the name of Jesus. And we're going to take authority over that rascal. We're going to take authority over every demon, every, I'm telling you, every imp, every principality, every power, every rule of darkness in this world, spiritual wickedness and high and heavenly places over Satan himself. And he has no power over you. And you will not now turn over your power to that snag tooth rascal because he has been coming in and he has been messing with your mind, causing you not to sleep, causing you not to focus. And the reason you can't focus is because you so worried and bombarded with thoughts that you got to cast that imagination down and bring it into subjection to the word of God by opening up your mouth and speaking what God says about you and your situation is that simple. And that's the way we exercise our authority. And I kind of got ahead of myself, but I just want to go ahead and lay it out there because he says, I love it. He says we can't be conformed. See, I told you when God changes us, he changes our spirit in the beginning. When we get saved, he changes our spirit, but we must renew our mind. We must renew our mind and meditation will help us to get rid of an old mentality. Meditation will help us to get rid of an old mentality. Now, I want to read this to you out of the book of James chapter one. What time am I working with? Okay. The book of James chapter one, verses 21 through 25. This is in the new living translation. He says here in verses 21 through 25, he says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. Remember, 
your soul, not your spirit. Your spirit is already alive if you're born again. See, we got to understand, uh, most people have used soul and spirit interchangeably, and they're not the same thing. You are a spirit. You possess a soul. The soul is comprised of the mind or memory, the will, the intellect, the emotions, and the imagination. In other words, your memory retains information. Your will enforces that information. Your intellect comprehends the information. Your emotions tell you how you feel about the information. And then your imagination is the creative part of you that now gives you a blueprint of how to execute the information. And so when you get saved, your soul now needs to be saved. Your mind needs to be saved. Some of you need to learn and how, and listen, allow the power of God to come in to help you to forget some stuff, to forget all of the past mistakes and failures so that you can freely move forward. And you got to now remind yourself, wait a minute, that was the old me. When I'm saved, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. All things are alive under God. And what Satan would try to do is he'll try to hound you and remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. But I declare and decree that the joy of the Lord is going to shine forth in you. And now you're going to make wise choices and decisions to cause acceleration. Because what God, I believe, is saying is there is a law of process that there are some things that may take some time and no matter how long or how old or how young you are, that there are some things, yes, that may take time that you need to start the process of building, growing and developing. But I do believe that there is a grace that's available. I do believe that the spirit of God has been speaking that as you begin to now transform how you think to transform and have new actions, that as a result of you doing something new, there will be something that's going to be released. There is ability that's going to be released to manifest the changes that you're making in your life. So yes, you've been praying for millionaire status, but you've been mismanaging your money. And God is like saying, okay, when you start managing things, bringing structure and order, that there will be a supernatural release to move you into what you've been sowing for. You've been sowing for stuff that you haven't been structured for. Glory to God. You've been sowing for stuff you ain't been structured for. And God says when you bring up the structure to now complement the sowing, you're going to see the supernatural. And you're going to see things take off like you've never seen before. But you keep flunking the test because your mind isn't there yet. And now because as a man thinker, so is he. So listen, before you become rich in the natural, you got to think like it. You got to think rich. You can't think broke and be a millionaire in the kingdom. You got to think wealth. You got to think abundance. You have to think excellent. You have to carry yourself because how you carry yourself how you carry yourself will determine what you attract. Okay, you attract who you are. You attract who you are. When you begin to now, listen, you can't expect righteous man and have wretched, um, ratchet um, uh, behavior patterns. Don't know king want a ratchet queen. I'm going to be straight up. And a true woman of God, a true queen, don't want no ratchet king. I know some people try to make a little flick. Yeah, I want a little ratchet in there. I want, okay, yeah, when you're making decisions, see, yeah, that, that the girl look good until now she don't know how to handle herself in business, handle herself in different um, affairs of life. And now you're trying to make moves, but the person you're trying to link up with ain't trying to make no moves. And so now you become frustrated because now you're trying to have a king's mentality and now trying to connect with someone that has a peasant's mentality. It's like oil and water it don't mix. Listen, some stuff now I'm telling you, ladies, listen to me. You do not have to dumb down yourself to receive God's best for you. You don't have to dumb down your belief. You don't have to dumb down your strength. God got somebody in the wings that's ready to now be there and to go through life together with you for those that are believing for it. Some people's like, I'm fine by myself. I ain't believing for nobody. Right now, I'm just working on me. Glory to God. And Paul says, he's like, I like that. He says, I, I'd rather you be like that. That way you can fully devote yourself to God. But listen, for those that desire to now be married, God is saying, I'm working on you right now. And at the same time, I'm working on them. That's for somebody out there. All right. Now, let me jump back into this. Now, um, in, in the book of Joshua, now I wanna really, I'm going to get real quick um, to these points I want to make about meditation because I really want to get into that part. 
Um, because the more I'm talking to people, the more I'm realizing that they are not taking these principles and practically applying them on a regular basis. Cause somebody can come tell me, well, you know, Pastor, I'm doing it. Mm, no, you know, you're not. Cause the fact that you just came and told me and you start talking all this negative stuff has shown me that you're really not cause you're not doing it now and talking to me. You're not controlling how you think really what's coming out of you now in the heat of the moment is how you really feel about it. So what you need to do is you need to go back and spend time in that word, spend time saying who God says. listen, this is going to take what I'm getting ready to share with you. It is going to take systematic discipline, intentional obedience, Man, I'm telling you, I, I just got to get a shout out to my wife. I, man, she's believing for something right now. And I've seen this girl get up early in the morning and I hear her making confessions of her faith. That stuff get me stirred up. It get me, it, listen, it challenges me. Boy, you need to get on the ball with some stuff. This girl, she's she doing her thing. And God is showing, listen, she's because she's locked in on something. And when you read it, listen, when you read it to achieve something and accomplish something, something, you lock in on it. There is extreme focus. There's a thing where, listen, come hell or high water, I'm doing what God's telling me to do. I'm following the instructions and I'm positioning myself to receive what it is God has for me. There is an opportunity for you all out there. Now, somebody, somebody's listening. Somebody's listening. That God is doing something supernatural. God is doing something so favorable in you guys' lives. I'm telling you, if you just, if you just hang on there, if you just walk in this thing, if you just trust and believe God, what I mean by that, we hear these statements, man. We hear these, 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 they're biblical statements, but sometimes, you know, when you're talking to a person, like, okay, how do I trust God? How can I trust somebody I can't trace at times? I can't see them all the time. Listen, God says, blesses the man that believes and has not seen. And so now you got to understand it's going to require your faith. And meditation on God's word will help feed your faith to sustain you from the point of, I believe I receive it to there it is. From the point you ask God for the thing and you pray about it to seeing the fruit or the manifestation of it. God's saying there's this, this bridge called patience. You got to walk over, you got to cross over. That means you're going to have to be consistent. You're going to have to be constant. You're going to have to be the same. That means you're going to have to be focused. That means you're going to have to be unmovable. That means when stuff looks like it's not working, you still going to do what you know you're supposed to do because you have confidence in the process of what God has told you to do versus now looking at the natural just because it don't look like anything going on does not mean there is nothing going on. What God is doing is number one, he's working on you. He's working on your faith. He's working on your attitude. You're trying to see, you got to watch this little manipulative, manipulative thing where you go to God to change. Watch this. You're going, some people are going to God to change circumstances of people. Whereas the word comes in first to change you, to change your outlook, to change your faith. And even in the midst of storm, you know how to sleep. Just like Jesus was asleep on a pillow on the back of a boat with the disciples, they freaking out and they wake him up. And then he calms the sea down and then he rebukes them. He rebukes them. He was like, didn't I tell y'all we going to the other side? I already told you what my will was, but now just cause you see the winds going and you see the water raging and you see the seas and all this stuff, you freaking out and you think you gonna die. Listen, I'm here with you on the boat. That's why they went and grabbed him. They were so afraid, but God was trying, listen, Jesus was trying to show them something. He rebuked the storm. He spoke to it. He calmed it down. And he was trying to relay a message to them. He was a living example. When these storms rise up, what are you speaking? Are you crying out, master, master, why have you forsaken me? God, why you ain't doing this? Why you ain't said nothing? Why you ain't stepped in? God had already stepped in because he live in you. And now you got to release him by releasing the authority and the power that you have. You speak what's right. God, listen, you waiting on God. God waiting on you. He's seated. He says, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I've given you authority over the works of my hands. I've given you the ability to speak. Now you need to open up your mouth. Instead of speaking negative, you need to start speaking my word over this thing and water this situation with the word because you're a decree of thing and it will be established, you king, you priest unto God, that when you establish, when a king establishes, when they make a decree, it is a law for the land. 
What is the law that you are establishing for you and your house? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, me and my family, we prosper in all that we do. We ride prosperously. There is an outbreak. I'm going to speak it. There is an outbreak of prosperity and success like you've never seen before. And you're going to see. I know in the May house, so we ride prosperously. We live prosperously. And God is calling you now to step up your level of living and how you need to think, how you need to believe. Some of you need to take a step, step of faith. You you need to break out of the mundane. You need to break out of the old patterns that you've been doing. You so busy, stuck up in the house. Get out, take a walk. Go see the sun. Go somewhere. Have some fun. Go play some golf. Go do something. It's okay. Some of you need to take some of that money. Go shopping for once. Just get out there. You're so afraid of everything. God said you need to break out the monotony. Let Satan know. I don't care what's going on in society. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that touches my body dies instantly. Now, listen, 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 listen. Now, I, I hear this. I hear this. I hear this. Well, you got to be mindful. Bro, you got to be mindful. You got to be careful. You know, at my age, I don't know if I can handle that. Well, that's why, because you keep speaking it. God never put an age cap on it. You did. Did his word say it was determined about how old you are, whether you're going to live long or strong? Did he say that sickness and disease only for those under 65? No, he didn't. His word, you got to believe his word. You got to trust in him. You got to believe. Some of you by faith, God, it's going to come. It's like a bully. It comes a point where you got to stand up to that bully. What has been causing you, causing you to live in fear? You're going to have to stand up to it sooner or later. You're going to have to stand up. It's like, you know what, doggone it, you right. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to walk in fear. You know what? Now, hear, hear me. I got, I'm, I'm trying to do it, quote unquote, with wisdom. But sometimes when you just speak truth, it don't require really no explanation. It just requires belief. Okay, something that even scripture says, I, I'm getting here. I'm, I'm just flowing with this thing. But listen, it talks about, listen, you should drink. It's like if you drink any deadly thing, scripture says it won't harm you. Like Paul did. Paul reached into the fire. He was getting something, made this fire, and this snake jumped out and bit him, and he just shook it all and put it down. This was a poisonous snake, and nothing happened to him, and the people were looking. Why? Because he functioned in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and that venom that was in that snake could not kill him because he functioned in God's power, authority, and in his will. I know. I know. I know. See, if your faith ain't built up in it, you can't imagine living a life like that. And see, that's part of the problem. If you can't imagine it, you'll never see it. If you can't imagine it, you'll never see it. This is the tipping point. This is the turning point for some of you. The word of the Lord came that this month will be a month of a pivot. It will be a pivotal moment where you will have to make decisions, that there will be things that will happen. And God began to reveal to me, I believe, by his spirit, that some stuff will be good, some stuff will be bad moments. But whatever it is, it will be a pivotal moment. And it will push you. Even some of the bad is going to turn around for your good. That when it's all said and done, you'll look back and you'll see, man, that was the moment where I finally made a quality decision to do what it was God called me for me to do. Now, I'm not believing for the bad. <laughs> it's just, listen, we don't, have to, we don't have to deal with the bad. We can just say, okay, God, what does your word say? I'm going to do it, period. But some people, they kick against, like how scripture says, how Paul said, they kick against the pricks. They, they, they go against God's word. It's the way of the transgressor. But now God says, I need for you to be established in something. He says in Joshua 1 and 8, the Amplified says it like this. Yeah, I've been preaching this stuff the same way, and I ain't getting off of it because you got to stay with it. It's repetition of this stuff. This is why sometimes you don't grow in stuff. You get excited about it, then leave it because you want something else new. And then you don't become established in the old stuff. I can give people a test and say, what does this say? I don't know. Haven't I been preaching it for years? What we got there? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, I got my camera person I'm working with. All right. So now I want you to do this. It says this, this book of the law in Joshua 1, 8, it says shall not depart out of your mouth. That means you need to continuously speak it. 
but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. Here's another day and night situation. That means God is trying to get something across to us. When we see it repetitiously, God is trying to get this principle across to us. I need for you to give attention to what I say on a regular basis that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. Okay, I got to say something. I got to say this. I get it. Sometimes we, we get tired of some things over a period of time and over a while. But sometimes it's like, you know what? I'm tired of hearing. I'm tired of hearing scripture. I'm tired of hearing. Okay, what do you, what you, what you mean by that? You, you mean you're tired of hearing it that way or now it's become because what can happen is to the person who doesn't receive with the intent to do it's going to sound mundane and then all of a sudden your ears become numb to wisdom, counsel, and knowledge. And what will happen is because you're not doing it and you don't plan on doing it, it's not that you, man, it's not that you've lost confidence in God to a degree. It's really you've lost confidence in yourself. You've lost confidence in knowing that I haven't been doing it. Chances are I never will. And God says, I need to snatch you out of that. I need to wake you up that you can begin to believe from right now. The point of right now, you can start believing and they can start transforming and changing everything that's around you. You need to believe that now to say, you know what? You can't teach it. And say, you say stuff joking. You can't teach old dog new tricks. Yes, you can. That's how you stay young. Stop calling yourself old. Then you start thinking old. Then you start acting old. You start believing old. Well, my time is up. Well, I guess I ain't no, you know, I ain't done it by now. If it ain't happened by now, never will. See, there you go. You're thinking that way. And that's Satan. He's trying to kill you prematurely. And God is trying to bring life back to you. Who says you can't travel in your 70s and 80s? and 90s and 100. And listen, if you believe for 120, why not be strong? Not Why not say, you know what? I'm not going to be one of those 100-year-olds that's bound over. I'm going to be strong, erect. My body's going to be in alignment. Yeah, I understand the outward man perishes and the inward man is renewed day by day. But now you may need to get up there and start doing some exercises. Get your body in order. Get it you Sit up straight in the chair. You know, don't be hunched over in life. Now, I'm talking about if you can handle it. I'm not listening. If, if it's something physically that's going on at the same time, believe God, release your faith. Oh, you're not sensitive. You're not sensitive. God, y'all, y'all, I'm telling you, if Jesus was right there with you, he'll be asking you, will you be made whole? He's asking you the question. He says, I got the ability. It's already here. Will you be made whole? It's time for you to come off of that blood pressure medicine. It's time. It's time. It's time. Release your faith for it. Release your faith for it. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I can't. I can't stop, folks. I got to get this out to as many people. God says, go teach my people who they are. They are now living. They keep thinking too small. He says they have to break out. Break out in their thinking. And so watch this. He says this. If you if you don't let this word depart out of your mouth in Joshua 1, 8, he says, excuse me, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous. I shall make my way prosperous. And then we shall deal wisely and have good success. We're going to have good success. We, good success. We all eating. We all living well. We all enjoying ourselves. We all coming together. Happy. L glory to God. Yes, it can happen. Yes, it can happen. Every house. Come on, spirit of fire, folk. Every member, no member left behind. No partner left behind. Everybody coming to the partner meetings, coming to services together. Everybody riding prosperously. Everybody coming in looking well. Everybody healthy and strong. Yes, it can happen. Yes, it can. And you got to trust God and believe God. Come on now. Some of you need to buy a new outfit. Come on now. That's going to be your prosperity outfit. You're going to say, you know what? I'm going to do something. I'm going out. I'm going to look good. I'm going to strut. I'm believing God. So, I'm, uh, okay, I'm, I'm about to say some stuff. 
Some, some, see, some of you don't even, you look like what you believe. Oh yeah, I know that's thing. I got to say it. I got to say it. Because sometimes you got to adorn yourself and, you know, feel better. Get out, move around. Come on, stop thinking small. Stop being around small thinking people. Come on, challenge their thinking. Challenge your thinking with the word of God. Come on now so we can deal wisely. It's time for the law of exposure to take place. Time to expose yourself to something new. Do something different. So I get tired of hearing stuff like, well, black folk don't do that. Why? It's because you just ain't exposed yourself to it. You know, black folk, we don't ski. Black folk, we don't swim. Black folk, we don't do nothing. See, and that's the problem. And you will always limit yourself in life because you keep thinking because you black, you don't do certain things. Get out of that thinking. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ripping. I'm coming for it. I'm coming for that thinking. I'm coming for the old foul way of thinking. You've been living in that house forever. You need to paint it. You know it. And then you living in poverty. You living in poverty. And God's saying, no, I got to deal with this, folks. Because, see, what's in you is going to manifest on the outside of you. Clutter should bother you. Mm -hmm. Clutter, dirt should bother you. If you're an excellent person. See, I see, see, I know. Okay, I know it's strong. I know it's strong. I know it's strong. See, this stuff I say to myself. This stuff I say to myself. Uh-uh. What, what I remember I went to a ministry to speak to this man of God one time. I think I dropped something off or whatever. And, man... Pr prosperous ministry. I came back out to my car and I was so hot with myself because I had junk in my car and normally coming up, I was not a guy that had a junky car or dirty car. I kept my cars clean. And all of a sudden I realized you, you let little stuff slip in and you, you allow it. I got so hot with myself. I started grabbing that trash. I was like, man, what's the matter with you? You're supposed to be better than this. What happened? It was the anointing of the atmosphere of success and prosperity that got off on me and agitated me and said, wait a minute, I'm driving beneath my privileges. Something ain't right here. I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a child. You a child of the king of the king. You a, ch a child of the king. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you is. Yes, you is. I love y'all. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Cletus. I love you. I love you. Listen, watch this. I got to finish out. I got to finish out. I got to finish out. I'm going too long. I'm going too long. All right. Meditation. Let's deal with this real quick. When you meditate, what happens when you meditate? Now, by definition, meditation means to mutter it. It means to ponder something. It's like rolling it over in your head. In the natural, it's like when you chew food when you're eating, you chew it so many times so that your body can properly digest it and that you can get the fullness of the nutrients in the food that you're eating. But it's important what you're eating. Now, when you meditate, number one, you break down the meaning of the thing that you're meditating on. So when you grab God's, like the scripture, okay? When you think of stuff, I always use this particular scripture um, in James 4 and 7. It says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he'll flee. Then you take it. Okay, let me break down this word submit. Submit, sub, to come up under, mit. Submit, we get our word submission. So I come up under the mission, the authority of. Okay, if I come up under God's authority, when you're up under authority, you can now function in that authority. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Okay, okay, that's the first step. Now, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. Okay, to resist means to apply um, some, some type of pressure or effort against something. I'm going the opposite of it. And so now when I resist, the way I resist, according to even the book of Luke chapter four, that when Jesus resisted Satan, he resisted temptation, he spoke words. So I can resist the devil when I speak words against them. So now I'm submitted unto God. So when I speak to the devil, I'm not speaking in my own authority. I'm speaking in God's authority that he's granted unto me because I'm a part of the body of Christ, the anointed one in his anointing. So when I show up, Jesus shows up. And so now it's now it's about my big brother. I don't know if y'all have ever dealt with bullies. I remember I had this bully that guy was bullying me in uh, elementary school one time. I ain't gonna say his name. And then my older brother came and he dealt with him. And the boy never messed with me again. Wow, my big brother showed up. And see, Jesus, as your big brother, he's right there with you. 
that when Satan sees you, he sees him. He sees all of heaven's forces at your disposal, but you got to see it. You got to see it. And he says this, when I resist the devil, he will flee from me. That word flee means to run as in terror. Satan is no match for you, saints. He is no match whatsoever for you. So now you break down the meaning. See, I got all of that out of that one. Number two, you carefully ponder how this word applies to you personally. How does this apply to me? What I'm hearing. Okay, so when these things come against my mind, Satan has been messing with my mind, messing with my body, messing with my family, messing with my money. So now I have authority to rebuke him to take his hands off of whatever it is I'm dealing with. So now in the name of Jesus, how can I rebuke Satan off of my mind? I cast down imaginations and thoughts. I open up my mouth. So when a negative thought comes, that Satan coming at me. So now me submitting to God is me submitting to his thoughts about me. The way he says I am, who he says I am. Satan says you ain't no good. God says I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm a king and a priest. I'm an ambassador for Christ. What you mean I ain't no good? Man, I'm a king. I'm royalty. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I'm a peculiar person. See, this is how I resist. I open up my mouth and speak, okay? How do you apply the word to your life? That's when God's wisdom shows up and shows you now, okay, if God says to love someone unconditionally, God will begin to show you how can you show them love? Then you stop and think, what is their love language? Okay, this is how they interpret and receive love, but this is how God wants to demonstrate his unconditional love. I got to come out of myself and begin to now show them this care and concern. Okay, so now these are the things and how we apply. This goes into number three. Set yourself in agreement with what the word says. This is a big one here. Agree with it, folks. I have literally seen people, you tell them exactly what God says in his word, show them what he said, and you can see the uncertainty. Uncertainty. You can see them in their minds trying to determine whether they're going to do it, whether they're number one going to agree with it. I don't agree with that. Well, who are you? That you're going to say, okay, this is God saying this. And you even stopping to think it through? See, that determines even, and see, this, this is what it comes to. You have yet reverenced God. You have no honor for him. His word doesn't mean what you say it means. When you honor someone, their words carry weight. You know, there are people that say, man, I honor what you say. What you got to say to me? I tell them and they don't do it. You don't honor. You say you're giving a fault. Is this false honor? It's like what Jesus said. You, you do it with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. Oh, yeah, yeah. So just correct that. Christians, we good for that, boy. A lot of people good for that. Boy, we, we, we preach Jesus to each other and go out in the world and live just like him. I tell you, you can't determine who the Christian and who ain't. Okay, that's a whole nother thing. I say that. See, that ain't condemning, but that's just stuff we got to deal with. See, these are, these are little, the Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Sometimes it's that unresolved thing that's been holding you back. That while you start med meditating on it, God's going to begin to reveal things that need to be corrected so that he can get rid of it out. So that, you know, you can get rid of it out of your life so that it won't hinder the blessing from manifesting like it always wants to. And this is your due season and this is your due time. Now, number four, now I got on a couple minutes. Number four, it develops. I got to get ready to stop, but I'm going to just finish these couple. Number four. It develops the inner image of the word or the scripture that you're meditating on. When you stop, when you start saying stuff like wealth and riches are in my house and you sit and you close your eyes and just think about it, spend some quiet time alone, set a, set a good atmosphere. These are some practical things. Set an atmosphere, put on some maybe worship music or something that settles you down, that calms you, that quiets you. And that now when you begin to take God's word and say, okay, wealth and riches are in my house. Success is my portion. I see myself walking in abundance. I see myself healed. 
and get the image in your mind of you doing it. See, get the image of you driving up to your aggregate driveway circular with the fountain in the middle. After you come through your gated, your gates, and you didn't hit the buzzer, and you didn't come through the gates of your, your house. I ain't say your community, your estate. That's up, up to you, whatever you believe in for. It can be your community. And you come up to it. And you go in to your nice garage and that's heated. Oh, glory to God. And then you go right in, walking into your main area, and that you see the stairwell on both sides it comes down and that you're opening in the middle and that you have your decor set up with your marble countertops and see all these things see and then you walk into your media room and, and you got the big screen and you got the plush seating and that you're sitting there with your family and after you've gotten up and you worship God and y'all praise God together and now y'all enjoying God together and y'all having family night with the popcorn machine there popping right there, a vintage popcorn machine. See, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Even in your backyard, you got your golf course. You got your nine holes that you want to go out there and play if you want to every now and again. You see, you got all that stuff. See, you got your own land. That Now, you got enough property that your children can have a house over here and one can have a house over there and that you all have, may, uh, see, I was going to say mayor states. That's what I like to call it. Amen. Glory to God. And so see stuff like that. See, you just talking, you just dreaming. Hey, that's what meditation is. You see yourself there. Okay. Okay. You see yourself there. You see yourself healed. Think about by his stripes, I'm healed. Imagine yourself pain free. Imagine yourself being able to run. Imagine yourself doing things that you haven't done in a long time or that you've never done. I know. Time has worn some of you down. Time has worn some of you down. It's like, Pastor, I've been trying to do that stuff. And I've been doing it to a degree, but I've gotten tired. I believe God is bringing you a Holy Ghost boost. I pray that the gift of faith begins to manifest at a greater level. The gift of faith is God supernaturally imparting faith into you to be able to believe him for something. It's out of your natural ability. It's, it's supernatural that it causes you to be able to believe for something that you couldn't in and of yourself. I pray that it manifests. That goes along with the gift of faith, the gifts of healings and working of miracles. Signs and wonders. God said this will be a time of miracle signs and wonders in every area, not just in physical healings, but also in finances, in restoration of families, in whatever. There is supernatural transfers. There are supernatural ideas. See, what we think is super, sometimes we don't, we just think spectacular all the time when we think supernatural. Supernatural is just God getting involved in the situation. He getting involved with your situation. Some of you credit scores coming up. Just to get into what he wants you to get into. I mean, debts being canceled. And also the money coming into your hands to pay the debt off. That means you got to be disciplined. Because sometimes the person that you owe and believing for the money that you're supposed to owe them too. Just like you believe for the debt to be paid, they believe for the debt to be paid too, to them. See, that comes with character. All right. Number five, I just got two more things. Number five, it will unlock ideas to accomplish what you're thinking on. That's just what I just start dealing with. When you meditate on the word, it starts to unlock the ideas to accomplish what you're thinking on. With long life, he satisfies me and gives me his salvation. I walk in divine health. I declare that my kidneys are healthy and strong. Okay, you meditate on a healthy body. Then God says, drink a gallon of water a day. Eliminate sugars out your diet. I want you to begin to walk 30 minutes a day. I want you to do this. I want you to eliminate the belly fat around you. I want you to go ahead and set up a regimen. I want you to do this. Wait a minute. I don't want to do all that. I just want you to supernaturally take it off of me. See, we always see, well, sometimes what we say we want supernaturally is just now God alleviating us of the responsibility of what we're supposed to do. We can't do that. God ain't going to do what you can do. He only going to do what you can't. Mm -mm -mm. Shut up. What you say right there. 
Number six, it will affect all areas of your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions, your imagination. It'll affect how you think. It'll strengthen your will to help enforce you because that faith begins to stir you up. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. It'll stir up your will to enforce obedience. Your intellect, your mind becomes sharper. Your emotions, you begin to settle down. You control your emotions. Because when you're in faith, it's hard to be in fear. And when you're in fear, you know you're all frazzled, crying, worrying, bawling, squalling, all of that stuff. But when you're in faith, you bold, boy. Ain't nothing bothering you. Glory to God. <laughs> Glo Man, I got to say, the other thing came up. I saw that with my wife with some stuff. As she'd been believing God for stuff, there were things that she would have at one point as she was going through some stuff, I would have seen her break a little bit in areas. We both done it in different areas. But to see the strength, I noticed it. I said, oh, she growing. You can tell when people are growing when they don't go back to old ways or old patterns of behavior. We all have done it. Look at yourself. Some of you that have grown. The stuff you used to cry over, you laugh at now. You're growing. Some of you need a good laugh. Go out. Look at a good movie. Have some fun. Some of y'all so serious, man. Have some fun. That's going to relax you. That's going to de-stress you. Some of you so tense. You need to find a hobby. All that. I'm about just praying the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you can pray in the Holy Ghost too. But sometimes you just need to get out and have some fun. All you do is pray. Sometimes you just got to get out. And that's where you're going to find some stuff. When you're out there, you stay in the pray prayer closet. God ain't designed you to stay in the prayer closet. He wants you praying continuously, but then he wants you good to get out and live. Enjoy his creation. Enjoy life. Who am I talking to? Somebody. Have some fun. No wonder you ain't met your mate. You still stuck up in the house. He out there and you in the house. Or she out there and you in the house. Okay. See, I know. But they said with COVID, we can't go nowhere. I understand all this stuff. Listen, God know how to hook you up with who you need to hook you up with. I don't know why I keep dealing with this earth. Somebody thinking about it. All right. I'm done. Eyes is done. I'm not fussing. I'm not fussing. I'm not fussing one, one bit. I'm, I'm pouring this word into you. Because God is saying this. It's time for all of my people, my desires for all my people to walk in the fullness of what I've called for them to do. And there is nothing too hard for God. I sense the heart of God right now. And there is such a longing for him, for his people to walk. Yes, you're going to get things when you get to heaven. You're going to see things that you was like, oh, and one it's going to be like, oh, my God, you can be so happy that you're there, number one. But then, two, you're going to realize this book was true all along. That you didn't have to wait to get there to have what he wants you to have here. Heaven, earth is a reflection of heaven. That was the original intent. When God created Adam and put him in the garden. Okay, I was going to say something. God put Adam in a successful situation. I heard somebody say in the video, I heard a little bit of it. It's like God set Adam up to, and Eve up to fail. He didn't set them up to fail. Their choices did that. He put them in abundance and gave them rule. Satan just tricked them. Don't let them trick you. Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We give you praise, glory, and honor for this time. And I thank you, Lord, for each and every individual under the sound of my voice that they are now walking in abundance, increase, prosperity, success, favor in every area, that all things are working well in their homes, in their minds, that they have the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God is formed within them. And so we give you praise, glory, and honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all, listen. This is it for tonight. Spirit of fire at home. We dig into the word. We hear what God is saying. 
we want to grow thereby. All right. And so at this time, um, you know, sometimes I, I go, if I sense that, Hey, we can just move forward with some things. Normally I give an invitation for Christ. I feel like it's like, I always just, I'll just do it then since I'm here. <laughs> then listen, if you're born, if you're not born again, the first thing you need to do is get on the winning team. We're the winning squad. All we do is win. God always causes us to triumph. We got the winning hand. We got the winning side. I'm telling you, we listen, it can seem so unfair, man. We, I mean, we balling in the body. God's nature abides in us. His spirit lives in us. God wants to come and live in you. If that's you, you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come on, come on, come on. I just want you to do something real simple for me. I want you to repeat the simple prayer after me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, friends, if that's you and you made Jesus the Lord of your life, we want to know about it. Listen, send us a message. Message us. It can be via Facebook, via one of our um, uh, platforms and streams and pa uh, platforms, social media platforms. Whether you want to tweet us, you want to send it to us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. Let us know. Hey, I've gotten born again. We want to help you grow in the word of God, help you grow in the things of God. And so we take that very seriously. So all of our spirit of fire folk, we thank you so much for showing up. We want you to pray for those guys out there. Listen, you know, those that have just gotten saved, you need a church home. You need a place. There may be somebody else watching. You don't have a place that you call a church, a church home. You don't have somebody that you can call pastors or to pastor your life. Pastors are shepherds, under shepherds. Jesus is the chief shepherd. And so God ordains individuals in the fivefold ministry gifts, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher for the perfecting of the saints to help develop you into maturity in the things of God so that you can effectively, effectively do the work of God in your life. Okay. And so God wants you to grow. So it's important for you to connect. And so listen, we welcome you here. We want you to be a part of our church family. And listen, we just thank God for you. We promise to love on you, to pray over you, to, to watch over you, to pray for your well-being. There may be somebody, hey, you're not here in Richmond, Virginia, but you're in another state. We have people that are in other states as well. But I'm telling you, you can connect with us and be part of our church family. Right now, we are virtual. And so, listen, come on and be a part of this virtual church family. That Listen, we will make sure that we provide counsel and wisdom to you. You can now come and connect with us, y'all. So there's some information that's coming up. You can go to our website at spiritoffire.us, spiritoffire.us, and click on, click on the connect uh, card information that's on there. And uh, you can send us your information, and we'll have somebody to reach out towards you. All right, at this time, we're going to honor God in our giving. So the information is coming up on your screen. Whatever God is telling you to do, do it. I prayerfully ask that you consider and pray. Lord, what is it that you would have for me to give? Just ask him. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. And I believe that God's grace will abound towards you, that you have an all sufficiency in all things will abound to every good work. All right. So at this time, as you're honoring God and you're giving, giving is just as much a form of worship uh, as any other part. And so we want to make sure that we um, are there with you, that we give you that understanding and knowledge. And that, listen, when, listen, I say it like this. As you have received, so to the, to the degree that you've received, do, do you value the word that's being shared? Do you value what's being taught? Then as, as freely has been given to you, then freely give. Okay? No pressure. God doesn't want you to give under compulsion or being pressured or manipulated into giving. 
We just teach you the word of God and we ask that you respond to what the spirit of God says. Thank God for you. We pray God's best over you. We pray for the hundredfold return over every seed sown. We declare and decree increased prosperity and success over your life in Jesus name. All right, friends, I've gone over time. Please forgive me tonight. Um, I, I, I want to start reducing some of the time. I don't want to take too much time with you guys because I know you all are busy. You've had a long day working and things of that nature and family and all of that. Some of you ready to go and get you something to eat or whatever. So listen, this is Pastor Mike here at the great city of Richmond, Virginia with Spirit of Fire at home saying we love you. God bless you. Well, we are changing the culture, igniting a passion and living the dream. God bless you all. Have a great, wonderful and prosperous night. Peace.